Connor, you set me up. <laughs> Neuroenhancement for Inequalities in Elder Lives. It was a good enough title for Atlantic Philanthropies, God bless them, to give us a large amount of money to set up in Dublin what I think is a, a challenge as great as global warming. Now, economic and social inequalities are really determined by your brain function. Education really determines health, it determines uh, poverty, uh, it's about the only thing that matters. And one of the things that's really going to hit us is that uh, uh, our brain structure from the very earliest age is affected by the number of years of education. Uh, correlated, the actual density of the trees in the, in the hemisphere of your brain. And you can partly change that by early interventions. So the idea that it's all genetically determined, determined is, is wrong. And we can find from the recent programs in the States that you can have huge effects in early brain development of uh, children brought up in incredible poverty. You can, by intervening and providing the stimulation early enough, you can affect their lifelong uh, educational achievement, their addiction, their social um, uh, status, their, whether they're in employment or not, how, what age they have children. But it's not just true for children, and here's the, here's the rub, here's the, here's the bad news. Uh, most of you in here in your 20s or 30s, a few of you uh, like me and Mike and Avira, but the problem is that um, we're about to face something that's as great as global warming. Uh, but the good news is we can do something about it. Now, if we we're hearing about juggling tonight, the good news is that juggling can actually physically grow your brain, physically expands your uh, certain parts of your brain, uh, as does studying for exams. You will get a swelling of your brain. What's more, the more people you know, the better the pathology of your brain. If you die and we do a post-mortem, you'll have less Alzheimer's plaques in your brain with denser social connection. And uh, you can, uh, by providing stimulation of various types, it doesn't have to be specific, you can actually delay up to equivalent of 14 years of cognitive aging, you can delay uh, that, that decline. And um, uh, it's not to do with genetics. Here we have a graph of the, the more education you have, um, the less dementia you have, at, no matter what decade you were born in. And fortunately, for the, because the Swedes are such uh, amazingly meticulous people, they have a whole lot of identical twins, some of whom got dementia, some of whom who didn't, some of whom had a lot of education, some of whom only had minimal education, and the ones with minimal education got more dementia. Now, we're, this is the bad news. Um, there's 600 million people over 60 now. In 20 years' time, uh, there'll be 1.2 billion. The, the, our health services and our social services are going to be swamped. Uh, uh, we can forget. It's as bad as global warming as a challenge. So we really have to do something about this. And so that's what Neil is about. It's about trying to break this cycle of disadvantage that arises not just for children in ghettos in the States, but also for uh, adults um, as they grow older. Their poverty and their lack of participation is largely down to impaired brain function. So what do we do about this? Well, we have to, to get very serious. And Atlantic Philanthropy is a very visionary organization, gave us the money to, we're about to appoint a a new professorship in behavioral neuroenhancement to try and be get the best neuroscience with the best stimulation to try and make Ireland really a, a center for new methods for preventing or delaying the catalog of, of terrible uh, um, problem of dementia we're going to be facing throughout the world, in the developing world as well. S the Spaniards have already shown that you can uh, delay cognitive decline with a combination of pharmaceuticals and, and uh, <coughs> computer-based stimulation and face-to-face -face stimulation. But it's all very crude at the moment. It's not well understood what's happening in the brain. And we also have the obstacles that there's equity of access. Uh, the Matthew effect to them that hath will be given. There's bottlenecks in delivery, inadequate doses. We have to get methods that we can use in South Africa, that we can use in Vietnam, as well as in Ireland. And we need to, what we need to do is to combine the best neuroscience, very good neuroscience being doing next, next door, to combine new methods like external brain stimulation using magnetic pulses, 
and electrical, low voltage electrical stimulation to free up the brain for plasticity and combining that with stimulation. Thank you.